This is a nuclear fusion spacecraft, and it will travel 4.24% the speed of light on its 100-year journey to Proxima Centauri B. Mankind was born on Earth. It was never meant to die here. In which direction will the spaceship travel? And how will it generate artificial gravity? Will the population grow on board the spaceship, the Helianthus, over the next 100 years? What happens to bacteria in a closed-loop system? And what will the time dilation be once they arrive at the new planet? And what happens on board the Helianthus spaceship for the last 30 years of the journey to make sure that the passengers are adapted to the different living conditions on Proxima Centauri b, such as the higher gravity and the red light coming from the new sun? But why is the spaceship going to this specific planet, Proxima Centauri b? Because it is the closest habitable planet to Earth, at only 4.24 light years away. And with its nuclear fusion engines, the Helianthus will reach Proxima Centauri b in 100 years. There are 1,800 passengers on board, and the journey starts now. The spacecraft launches from high Earth orbit, firing up its nuclear fusion drive. It takes 15 days to accelerate under 1G to reach the cruising speed of 4.24%, the speed of light. And then comes the big spin. The Helianthus has passed Mars and is on its way to the asteroid belt next. Using its nuclear fusion engine, it took under two hours to pass the Moon and 14 days to pass the orbit of Mars. It is heading downwards 2.1 degrees below the ecliptic plane of the solar system. Earth and other planets go around the Sun almost like a flat disk. The star system of Proxima Centauri b is below this disk. That is why the spacecraft is on a downward flight path. Fifteen days have passed since launching from Earth. The engines have turned off. The spacecraft is now cruising at 4.24% the speed of light and will do so for the next 99 years. Now begins the spin maneuver. Thrusters on the outside of the Helianthus fire up. With a diameter of 750 meters, 2,460 feet, about double the length of an aircraft carrier, the outer ring rotates and spins. To generate 1 g of artificial gravity, it needs to spin 1.9 rotations per minute. After reaching 1 g, the same as on Earth, the spin thrusters turn off and the Helianthus habitat ring will keep spinning for the rest of the trip. This is due to the conservation of angular momentum in space. The Helianthus command deck now brings the main living facilities online, from the schools and virtual reality theaters to the medical facilities, birth centers, and gardens. There are also multi-level aeroponic vertical farms within the spinning habitat ring, as well as DNA, data, and crop seed storage vaults. Inside the bedrooms, the passengers reattach the living modules from the now walls down to the floor. When the spacecraft was accelerating, the G-forces were pushing down towards the engine. Now, with no more acceleration, the spinning is used to generate artificial gravity, pushing outwards, so the floor changes to the inside sides of the ring, with any windows designed into the now floor. The habitat ring rotates around the hollow core of the Helianthus. This hollow core, which has no gravity because it is not spinning, is used for cargo storage, including space shuttles that will be used by the future generations of passengers in 100 years' time to land on the new planet. Four days after the big spin, the Helianthus is now approaching the asteroid belt. This is not like the movies. The asteroid belt is not dense. The asteroids are not close together, they are far apart. The average distance between asteroids and the asteroid belt is almost 1 million kilometers, 600,000 miles. This is over two times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Even though the Helianthus is traveling 2.1 degrees below the ecliptic plane, the majority of asteroids are within about 10 to 30 degrees, so the spacecraft still passes through the asteroid belt. A path is plotted to avoid the asteroids. In any case, the Helianthus has been designed with protection against asteroids and the future elements that it will face. 
The front of the helianthus has been built with reinforced layers, since interstellar dust and gas clouds will vaporize and erode around a millimeter of depth every four light years. Tracking sensors and lasers are used to deflect larger micrometeorites, changing their trajectory away from the oncoming ship and clearing a path. The helianthus is out in the vast darkness of interstellar space, the region between the stars, filled with dust, clouds of gas, cosmic rays, and rogue planets. The spacecraft left Earth's solar system over one month after launching on its journey, passing by the orbital distances of Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, Halley's Comet, the Kuiper Belt with Pluto, and crossing the heliopause. It is now in interstellar space, heading for Proxima Centauri b. The command deck keeps close tabs on passenger population numbers. When the Helianthus left Earth, there were 1,800 people on board. This number will grow to under 4,500 during the 100-year journey to Proxima Centauri b. On board the ship, there are 1,300 adults. 300 of these adults are the parents of the 300 children already on board. About half of the children turn into adults after 10 years, and about 33% of the adults become elders every 10 years. There is an average lifespan of 80 years, and 33% of the elders aged 50 to 80 who bring wisdom and experience to the population pass away every 10 years. The onboard biologists keep track of the evolution of bacteria on board the spacecraft to prevent the collapse of the ship's biosphere. This is because all of the bacteria on the ship is evolving in a closed loop system much faster than the humans. Bacteria reproduce much faster, so there will be thousands or tens of thousands of new generations per year depending on the type of bacteria. And there are possible mutations as they evolve, becoming incompatible with human life, resulting in bacteria that once had a neutral effect evolving to become pathogenic, disease-causing, or the bacteria that once aided in human digestion evolves to no longer provide that benefit. The first year on the Helianthus brings the firstborn child, marking the beginning of the new space generation born onto the spacecraft. The first baby is named after the ship, Helianthus, derived from the Greek words helios, meaning sun, and anthos, meaning flower. Thirty-two more babies have been born during this first year of the journey. Each new birth is a sacred moment, marked by sending a tiny pebble brought from Earth out into space creating a symbolic bridge back to Earth. The Helianthus is 0.424 light years from Earth, over 4 trillion kilometers, 2.4 trillion miles. The communications delay back to Earth has grown to five months and one day to send a message one way. And there is already time dilation. Ten years have passed on the spacecraft, but on Earth, ten years and three days have passed, and this difference will only get larger as the spacecraft keeps traveling at 4.24% the speed of light for the next 90 years. Here is an explanation of the relativistic effect of time dilation. Imagine time as a river, flowing steadily. If you are sitting on a boat, not rowing, you and the river flow at the same speed. But if you start rowing your boat really fast, Looking at the river, it's as if the water slows down around you and appears to be moving backwards, but not for the people on the shore. You and the river still reach the same destination, but you experience less river flow compared to those on the shore. You age a bit less because your piece of the river flowed more slowly for you. How many extra days will pass on Earth when the spacecraft arrives at Proxima Centauri b? The first deaths have occurred on the spacecraft during the first 10 years of the journey, their bodies sent into space. A shipwide moment of silence takes place each time a passenger passes on, followed by a reading, talking about their future planet Proxima Centauri b and how the passenger has completed their duty, and their memory will live on forever on the new planet. The 20th year on board the Helianthus marks the beginning of the second new generation born onto the spacecraft. The population is growing, so genetic diversity is crucial in order for there to be a well-balanced population during the 100-year journey and beyond. 
This means having rules. On board the Helianthus, there are strict reproduction guidelines. There are rules regarding family size. To ensure each family has the same genetic influence on future generations and to avoid reducing genetic diversity, each set of parents will have a similar number of offspring. This number is set at a minimum of two and a maximum of three babies. This is needed to maintain the replacement rate of the parents and at the same time avoid high population growth that will strain onboard resources. There is also generational staggering. Parents are to reproduce at different intervals to prevent age clusters of children, large groups of children with the same age. All of these rules have been put into place to avoid the collapse of the passenger population. Even where a family lives on the spacecraft is monitored. The command deck allocates living quarters to different parts of the ship, creating a rotation system, making sure that individuals from different family units are more likely to interact. This ensures a regular mixing of the gene pool. And when it does come time to reproduce, couples undergo genetic counseling. Their genomes are sequenced to determine genetic compatibility and to understand any potential risks. If there are any issues, there are alternative options available on board, such as the artificial womb lab, or using cryogenically frozen spermatozoa and egg samples brought from Earth. All of these guidelines are especially important for the initial generations of passengers. Having a highly genetically diverse population to start with makes it easier to maintain that diversity over the 100-year journey and beyond. The Helianthus is 1.27 light-years away from Earth and 2.97 light-years away from Proxima Centauri b. The communications delay with Earth is 1.27 years to send a message one way. The first generation of children born onto the ship have now reached mature adulthood. Soon, they will transition to junior leadership roles and advanced operational duties. The 1,000th baby is born. It has also been given the ship's name, Helianthus. Other common names on the ship include Elysium, Helios, Surya, Apollo, Terra, Joro, and Centauri. Even this far away from Earth, Earth-based mythology continues to live on. There is talk on board the spacecraft of changing the planet name Proxima Centauri b to something more human or even more spiritual in nature. The Helianthus is entering the 50th year of its journey, the halfway mark. Looking out of the windows, the passengers start to see a distinct but faint star. This is their new host sun, Proxima Centauri. From this point forward in the journey, the star gets brighter and brighter with each passing year. The passengers have changed the name of the star. They have given their new sun the name Helios. It is a red dwarf star, and its brightness is much lower than that of Earth's sun. At 65% the brightness, future generations on Proxima Centauri b will be living with a lower light level of early evening on Earth. But the planet orbits its star much closer than Earth orbits the sun. One year is only 11 days. Their sun will appear larger in the sky, and the light will have a reddish color. The Helianthus ship will make changes to help the future passengers adapt to the new light and gravity. The Helianthus is now 2.54 light years away from Earth, with a communications delay of 2.54 years to send a message one way. There is a time dilation of 60 years passing on the spacecraft, while 60 years and 19 days have passed on Earth. The passengers have renamed their destination planet Proxima Centauri b. The name has evolved over the years and has now been replaced by the new official name, Elysia a paradise where heroes and the righteous go to ensure the continuation of humanity. At this point, 60 years into the journey, the command deck initiates the gravity evolution spin sequence. Since the gravity on Elysia is slightly higher than on Earth, the spin thrusters will be periodically fired up over the next 30 years to slowly increase the spin of the habitat ring, increasing the gravity on the spacecraft, so that for the last 10 years of the journey, the passengers, the new generations of humans, will be used to living under the heavier gravity that they will soon face on their new home planet. The expected gravity on Elysia is set to be around 1.026 times that of Earth, making it just slightly stronger. A person who weighs 50 kilograms, 110 pounds on Earth, will feel as if they weigh 51.4 kilograms, 113 pounds on Elysia. 
This slight added gravity means increased stress on the heart and cardiovascular system. The bones and muscles also undergo changes, becoming denser to support the higher gravity. The body's fluids redistribute slightly, leading to increased blood pressure in the lower limbs. And over time, the human species will become shorter on average, with a more compact body shape to be more energy efficient in the higher gravity environment. As the gravity slowly increases on board the Helianthus over the next 30 years, the lighting will also be adjusted. The lights on the spacecraft will slowly turn red and less bright to match the dark red light seen from the new sun, Helios, when living on the new planet. In a world with less light and a red hue, human eyes will adapt and evolve in several ways. The iris could turn a shade of amber or gold to optimize for the red light. Pupils could be larger to allow more light in, making the eyes look darker overall. The white part of the eye, the sclera, would also become more pigmented to reduce glare and improve vision in the dim light. So while Earth humans have a variety of eye colors and a white sclera, these future Elysian humans could have a darker sclera and golden irises. There have been onboard rumors of hidden cryolabs and hibernation pods, where wealthy individuals from the Earth planet have paid to be frozen and taken along on the journey to be woken up at the new planet. The more creative passenger types conjure up other folklore that these frozen beings plan to colonize and rule over the inhabitants when they reach their new home planet. The new home sun, Helios, is prominently visible to the passengers on board the Helianthus and is getting brighter as they approach their final destination. Three generations on board the spacecraft will make it to the new planet with the elders also looking to reach Elysia before the end of their lives. The Helianthus is now entering the final year of its journey and will soon be preparing for its deceleration. Here are the current onboard population numbers. The Helianthus has been cruising for 99 years and 350 days at 4.24% the speed of light. A continuous spin has been generating artificial gravity for those on board. But soon, 15 days before arrival, the spin thrusters will fire up again, this time in the opposite direction, for spin desaturation, to stop the spin. Then the Helianthus will perform a flip maneuver so that the engines are pointing towards Elysia, formerly Proxima Centauri B. When the engines fire up, this will be the deceleration burn to reduce velocity over the course of 15 days at 1G. Decelerating the spacecraft, slowing it down, to enter the orbit of the new planet, Elysia. Elysia's gravity has captured the Helianthus and settled the spacecraft into a stable orbit around the new world. The passengers have arrived at their new planet. Because Earth's sun is much brighter, the passengers on board the Helianthus are still able to see the star in the sky. While people on Earth cannot see the passenger's sun, their red star, Helios, the spin thrusters are fired up again to generate artificial gravity as the passengers live on board orbiting their new planet. A new ceremony is held paying homage to the ancestors of the ship. 2,924 passengers have passed away and 5,700 babies have been born. During the 100-year journey, there have been seven generations who have lived on board the Helianthus ship. And while 100 years have passed on the spacecraft, 100 years and 33 days have passed on Earth. A message is sent from the Helianthus to Earth announcing their arrival. This message will take 4.24 years to reach Earth and another 4.24 years for the spacecraft to receive a reply, a total of 8.48 years. The spacecraft will be communicating into the past. The passengers will soon take the shuttles stored inside the hollow core of the Helianthus down to the new planet, where they will begin assembling their new home base, which will be named the Elysian Fields. The first 10,000 days on Proxima Centauri B.